Hello listeners and welcome to the second program in our series. Let's learn hospitality, which is produced for grade 10 and 11 learners and anybody else who has an interest in the subject. My name is Anna Yambo and today we'll learn about the principle of food preparation. Please have a pen and notebook ready so that you make notes of the important points. And don't forget to take part in the quiz at the end of the program. Knowing how to use a knife or certain skill and being able to do different cuts will improve the visual appeal and professionalism of the food you prepare and cook. At the end of this program, you should be able to apply knife skills in the following preparation techniques, chopping, slicing, shredding, cubing, and julienne. Have the skills to use appropriate cooking methods and preparation techniques in food preparation. Good morning, class. Good, good morning, miss. Can Hilma and Helena share with the class what the fuss is about? Helena argued about how she doesn't eat pork, but yesterday went to one of the lodges and she ordered spare rib. I'm telling her that spare ribs is pork, but yet she doesn't agree with me. At home, she doesn't eat, saying that she's on a special diet, but yesterday she finished all the food on her plate. Well, that spare rib that I ate yesterday was tasting delicious, very, very far from the pork cooked by mom at home. It was well cooked with different flavors, with potato wedges on the side. I don't even think it was pork. And for some reason, I even forgot that I was on a diet. The food looked so appealing with different shapes, flavors. I really could not resist. Very well. For some reason, people tend to restrict themselves from eating certain food. Not exactly that they don't eat the food, but perhaps the first time they ate the food, the way the food was prepared was not well, which made them think that that's how the food tastes. On the contrary, no. Food taste depends on how they are prepared, cooked, and also the person who prepared the food plays a role. Skilled or rather, no skill. And this brings us to the topic of today, which is principle of food preparation. Miss, so meaning what I ate was pork, and that it's not that I disliked the food, but the way the food was prepared at first made me to dislike the food? My point exactly. Skills and knowledge of the cook is very important in food preparation. For the food to be prepared well and look appetizing, the cooker should know different knife skills as well as have the skill of how to prepare dishes using different cooking methods. The different cooking methods are, for example, poaching, bracing simmering, roasting, grilling, baking, stewing, and etc. Can you still remember the knife skill that we learned in grade 9? Yes, miss. We have chopping, slicing, shredding, cubing, and julienne. I remember most of us were not familiar with what julienne is. Exactly. And if I can remember well, julienne is to cut into thin, matchstick sized pieces with a knife example carrots for example mess we can cook a potato in different ways like mashed fried chip baked wedges boiled salad etc that's exactly my point hilma it's very important in hospitality industry that the food we serve to our guest or customer is well prepared so meaning chef and kitchen assistants should be well trained on knife skills and apply variety of cooking method in order to keep our customers happy and this will allow keeping the business running smoothly hmm, that's interesting uh well so today i have learned that food that is well prepared can arouse the appetite of even those that dislike the food i have learned the different methods of cooking the different knife skills and that chef and kitchen assistants should be well trained and skilled. Thus will allow them to prepare delicious food which will make the customers or guests want more, thus keeping the business running. 
And that brings us to the end of today's program. But before we say goodbye, here's a question for the day. Why is it important for hospitality establishment to have chefs that are well trained in the food preparation in the hospitality industry? This program was written by E.T. Shikongo. And until next time, stay safe. This program was brought to you by NAMCOL with funding from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture and the Commonwealth of Learning. Listeners, and welcome to the fourth program of our series, Let's Learn Hospitality, which is produced for grade 10 and 11 learners and anybody else who has an interest in the subject. My name is Laimi Ipinge. Today we'll learn about security and confidentiality in the hospitality industry. Please have a pen and notebook so that you can make notes of important points. And don't forget to take part in the quiz at the end of the program. Confidentiality and privacy are priceless and go hand in hand with the safety and security of all guests, employees and establishments. At any establishment, some of the employees will be given access to information which may be restricted or confidential. Discretion is always needed when answering inquiries about guests and the movement of staff. At the end of this program, you should be able to understand the importance of confidentiality and privacy in hospitality establishments. Think about you working at the reception and a call comes in. Hello, I'm Mr. Peterson. I would like to speak to your boss, please and your boss is seated in his office close by. How will you react to that call? Mm, uh, miss, I will respond by getting all the information of the caller first, and then informing him that he should hold the phone while I will go check whether my boss is in or not. Exactly. It's prohibited just to give off information like that without your boss approving whether he'll take the call or he'll reject the call. It's very important to get information of the caller so that your boss knows who's on the line. Because in some cases, what if the caller has some bad intentions and want to harm either the boss or the business? And this brings us to our topic for today, which is the importance of discretion and confidentiality in the hospitality industry. I also remember an aunt of mine who works at this restaurant and we used to ask her to share the secret of how they cook their chicken, but she refused. She argued that she has signed a discretion agreement and that they are not allowed to share the secret of their recipes. Good one. What do you think will happen if she were to share the recipe and everyone else knows? I'm pretty sure everyone else will be making or preparing the exact same chicken at home or even selling it and people will stop going to buy in the process and then the business is going to start losing customers. Right. And in most of the cases, the recipe could be the identity of the business. It's the reason why the business is running at the first place. Imagine disclosing all the secret of your recipes, then the business will downgrade. Yes, means <laughs> for example, KFC, their chicken is their identity. Imagine everyone else knowing the recipe. The business will downgrade. Exactly. The business or establishment has the duty to maintain supreme secrecy in order to continually attract and maintain the guests. Discretion is always needed when answering inquiries about guests and the movement of staff to avoid 
putting the safety and security of a guest at risk. This is the customers. Putting the safety and security of staff at risk. The employees. Compromising the organization's profits by informing, for example, the newspaper or tabloids if someone famous is staying in the establishment and it leads to a lawsuit, which is business or establishment. Putting the establishment's recipes of signature dishes in the restaurant that leaks out. For example, if the recipe of KFC's chicken leaks out, some people will make it at home and not buy KFC and they will not make so much money. Oh, that's interesting. But then how does business or an establishment maintain confidentiality? Methods used to maintain confidentiality of guests, employees and the establishment include some hospitality establishment ban the taking of selfies and other photographs in the public areas of the establishment as it may include pictures of staff or other guests in the background. People post this on social media without the permission of the other guests or staff. Some restaurants do not allow you to take pictures of their kitchen staff at work. If the restaurant has an open kitchen that you can see into. Front office staffs are not allowed to give out names or room numbers of guests or keys or replacement keys unless proof of identity can be provided. If someone does call about a guest, either explain to the guest that confidentiality, safety and security no personal information, including whether or not someone is staying at the establishment, may be given out. When guests check in or out, the front office staff should not say the guest name or room number loud enough for someone else to hear it. The type of information that should not be given freely over the phone includes personal telephone numbers and addresses of staff members, personal or financial information about your customers including room numbers, guest names and other information regarding guests. Some guests will instruct that calls be announced before they are transferred and others may wish to remain confidential, especially celebrities and VIPs. Organizational policies, staff movements and new appointments and resignations. Thank you, miss. But what about their customers and employees? For example, celebrities usually do not want people to find out where they are staying and will be unethical to disregard their request. Plus, if the public were to find out where the celebs were staying and what they were up to, the hospitality establishment would suffer as well because it would expose a lack of security on their part. Also employees at many upscale of five-star hospitality establishments are required to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which is an NDA, prior to employment. By signing it, they agree not to disclose anything about anybody, including after employment has been terminated. Employees risk immediate termination of their contract if management finds out staff have loose lips. They should not share detailed information with other departments unless there is a need to know circumstance in order to maintain that service consistency. I hope you've been taking notes of what we've just discussed in today's lesson. Most definitely, ma'am. Uh, in today's lesson, I have learned that the business or establishment has the duty to maintain supreme secrecy in order to continually attract and maintain guests and also to keep the identity of the business. And that brings us to the end of today's program. But before we say goodbye, here is the question for the day. A. What happens if information on guests who are staying at the establishment leaked out? This program was written by E.T. Shikongo. Until next time, take care. This program was brought to you by Namcor with funding from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture and the Commonwealth of Learning.
listeners, and welcome to the third program in our series, Let's Learn Hospitality, which is produced for grade 10 and 11 learners and anybody else who has an interest in the subject. My name is Ana Yambo, and today we'll learn about health and safety in the hospitality industry. Please have a pen and notebook ready so that you can make notes of the important points. And don't forget to take part in the quiz at the end of the program. It's a known fact that tourism is an important industry in Namibia. It's the third largest contributor to the country's gross domestic product, GDP, making it a valuable sector within the country. At the end of this program, you should be able to identify and describe health and safety control, equipment, personal protective equipment, maintenance, and occupational health and safety policy. Miss, are we going to have a cookery practical today? I'm judging from your dressing code. Yes, I think we'll be having practicals today. Well, good morning, class. Good morning, Miss. So, does it mean I can only wear an apron when we have a cookery practical? And why is it important to wear an apron during practical sessions? Yes, Miss, we mostly only wear aprons when we do cookery practical. I think it's important to wear an apron during cookery practice to protect your clothes from getting stained. Very good, Angel and Silka. Thanks for introducing our lesson for today, which is health and safety. Apart from apron, name other protecting equipments and briefly explain why we wear them. I think a face mask that we are currently wearing, by the way, to protect ourselves against COVID-19. But a face mask is also worn to protect our lungs from breathing in contaminated air. We also wear helmets and safety boots to protect the head and the feet from falling materials. Also, rubber gloves, eye goggles to protect from flying particles or splashes of corrosive liquid and the skin from contact with corrosive materials. Excellent, you too. It's important that employees in the hospitality establishment work in a conducive environment that's free from any harm and that their health and safety come first. So health and safety in the hospitality is important in order to prevent illness and injury, to reduce health and safety hazards. So it's important to keep maintenance of equipment to ensure they are in good working condition, thus not to lead to any injuries or accidents due to malfunction like mincer, meat slicer, etc. But miss, is there any policy that protects employees in the hospitality establishment to ensure that their health is considered? Yes, there is. It's called Occupational Health and Safety Policy and is governed by Labor Act Number no. 11 of 2007 in conjugation with 156. The goal of all occupation safety and health programs is to keep a safe working environment. A further advantage is that it may also protect co-workers, family members, employers, customers, suppliers, nearby communities, and other members of the public who are impacted by the workplace environment. Many hazards are present in hospitality establishment and the employer is responsible to keep employees safe from these hazards. This is so important that there is a whole chapter in the Namibian Labor Act 11 of 2007 dedicated to it. Oh, thank you, Miss Joseph. That was very interesting and informative. So I've learned the different personal protective equipment, also the importance of health and safety in the hospitality establishment, and the most important one, Occupational Health Safety Policy in Namibia, governed by Labor Act Number 11 of 2007, in conjunction with 156, that state that employees, by law, must provide employees with a safe and healthy working environment. And that brings us to the end of today's program. But before we say goodbye, 
Here is your question for the day. A. What happens if your work environment isn't safe for your guests or employees and if you don't meet health and safety standard? And B. Identify equipment that need maintenance to prevent injuries or accidents due to malfunctioning. This program was written by E.T. Shikongo. So until next time, take care. This program was brought to you by Namcol with funding from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture and the Commonwealth of Learning. Hello listeners and welcome to the fifth program in our series. Let's learn hospitality, which is produced for grade 10 and 11 learners and anybody else who is in interest in the subject. My name is Anna Yambo and today we'll learn about different factors that influence food choices. Please have a pen and notebook ready so that you can take notes of important points. And don't forget to take part in the quiz at the end of the program. Guests can influence the type of food requested and served because of their age, sex, occupation, religion, culture, and special diets, for example, vegetation or benting, low carbohydrates, etc. Common food allergies need to be taken into consideration too. At the end of this program, you should be able to Discuss the factors that influence food choices for meals, health and nutrition, availability of resources, knowledge, culture, season, religion or beliefs, and age. Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss. All right, in today's lesson, We'll be discussing about the factors which influence food choices, just like in our homes. Also in the hospitality establishment, we receive different kind of guests and every guest have different nutrition needs from different cultures, different religion and of different age, etc. Okay, let's say you went to dine with your friends to a five star hotel. What could be your expectation with their meals? I would like their meals to be delicious, well prepared, having variety of meals to choose from. And for me, that have allergies when it comes to fish and other seafood, I would at least expect them to have some special meal on their menu. Exactly. Remember that all establishments have a common law duty of care towards their guests, and this obligation extends to situations where guests have asked for a certain meal and they get served something that does not comply with that stated request. This can result in injury to those people. Dietary needs can be seen to include any situations where a guest has mentioned that they have special needs in relation to allergies, medications, health-related conditions such as diabetes, heart conditions, as well as specific diets that are mentioned. It's extremely important to make sure that special requests that relate to dietary issues receive extra attention and care as there can be severe medical consequences if dietary needs are not met. It's also important that hospitality establishments consider balanced diet on their menu. But how does religion or culture influence the food choices, miss? Good question. As we have said, we have guests of different cultural backgrounds. It's important that at least food of different culture should be included on the menus to accommodate different guests. A number of religions have dietary guidelines which must be observed more or less closely. 
different denominations within the religion may have slight differences in food guidelines. We'll briefly mention a few. Let's say for instance, Muslims eat halal food. That is food which is allowed or lawful. Food that are not halal are referred to as haram. And this food include pork and its byproducts. Any animal not slaughtered according to the special requirement, blood and carnivorous animals without external ears. Muslims may also not drink alcohol. While on the other hand, Hindus have a great respect for food and the way it interacts with other aspects of the day-to-day -day life. A lecture vegetarian diet is followed by many Hindus. No meat, poultry or fish, no eggs, but milk products are allowed and encouraged. While they are not total vegetarians, they do not eat much. They generally shun spicy food, mushrooms, garlic, onions, but will eat other genuine vegetarian dishes that are not bitter, sour or salty. Beef is prohibited as it's considered sacred. Buddhism. There are no set prescriptions for food restriction in Buddhism. Under the concept of ahisma or doing no harms, a lecture vegetarian diet is followed by many Buddhists. Rastafarians are permitted to eat food stuff that are cooked lightly. Meat are not eaten, canned food are avoided, and there are some restrictions on seafood. So in a nutshell, meaning depending on the belief or culture that is mostly practiced in that particular town or community, those foods or drinks should also be considered when planning meals? Very well. Yes, Eleni. It's important that establishments understand cultural belief differences in order to provide the best care to guests. Some other factors will also influence food choices, like skills and knowledge, capability and number of kitchen staff will have an influence on the menu and the food items that can be prepared and served. For instance, can they cope with high class cookery and complicated techniques or can they only have basic cooking methods like deep frying and roasting? If the staff do not have experience and knowledge, it will be difficult to produce quality meals. The number of staff will also have an influence on the number of different dishes that will be on the offer. Equipment of the kitchen as well as storage space. The type and capacity of preparation and cooking equipment and tools in the kitchen will determine the items that can be prepared and cooked in the kitchen. Example, you cannot provide freezer and refrigeration space and the numbers kinds and sizes of serving tools and dishes needed to serve each menu item. I have also seen that some restaurants offer pensioner special over lunch time or at early dinner times. These specials can include more than one course and a beverage in the price and also has specials for children. Very good, very good. They do that in consideration of different age of their customers or guests. Today's lesson was quite mouthful. Choices of meals is not as easy as we thought. On the contrary, it's been influenced by different factors like health and nutrition, culture and belief, age, skills and knowledge, equipment of the kitchen, as well as storage and space. It is extremely important to make sure that special requests that relate to dietary issues receive extra attention and care as there can be severe medical consequences if dietary needs are not met. What are our bodies need from food changes as we move through the different stages of life? Babies, children, teenagers, adults and older adults, pregnant and breastfeeding women all have different needs. A balanced diet is crucial on the menu. And that brings us to the end of today's program. But before we say goodbye, here is a question for the day. 
Explain how the seasons influence the choice of food in the hospitality industry. This program was written by Iti Shikongo. So until next time, take care. This program was brought to you by Namcol with funding from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture and the Commonwealth of Learning.